Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how I grew cabbage microgreens on sand successfully. So stay tuned for the video. What's up everyone? Today we are here in the grow space testing out some weird grow mediums. Now these are things that aren't necessarily meant to be grow mediums, but we thought that this would be fun to go ahead and try them and see how they grow microgreens. So today what we're going to be using is some coarse sand. I have been wanting to play with sand as a grow medium for somewhere between like a year or two years now, and we're just now getting around to doing that. Um, this sand has been filtered out three times and has already been sterilized, so I'm confident with using this to touch my produce. But one thing I do want to say is I wanted to use this because I have a feeling that we might be able to reuse this type of grow medium. The first thing we need to do is see if it even grows microgreens. So let's go ahead and get into what we're doing here today. So first, I need to measure out my sand onto my tray. Now you may be noticing, hey, there's not multiple trays here, you're only using a single tray. That's because it's sand, it's gonna fall through the bottom of our other trays. So we need something that is not going to fall through and that I can still pour water into. So that's why we're using this no hold tray right here. So now let's get our scoop. So I'm kind of just guessing right now on how much crow medium this is gonna take since it is really thin. And that right here is two cups and that's way too thin. So let's go ahead and keep this going. Okay, and I think that looks perfect. So we're gonna do four cups per 1020 tray. And since I have two tray heat, tray heat, tray here, tray here, we're gonna go ahead and fill this one up as well with four cups too. All right, so let's go ahead and spread this out. We're gonna get it even like we usually do with all of our grow mediums. This is fun, makes me wanna go to the beach. And I have a feeling that this should retain enough water to keep these guys growing and germinating but i do also think that you know we're gonna have to pay attention a little bit too since i don't think it's going to retain quite as well as some of our other mediums but who knows it's the fun of doing this and cj actually had a good point too it's probably going to be easy to overwater this so there's going to be a few things that we're just going to be kind of cautious of but still trying to make this a fun experiment um i'm like beyond excited for this right now okay so now that we have this in place, it's time to move on to seeding it. For today, I'm going to be using this Mammoth Red Rock Cabbage. This is one of my favorite ones, especially if you've seen our Red Acre Cabbage video. Um, this is kind of like that, but I think this one grows a lot better. It grows quicker and is easier to manage than Red Acre. So we're gonna be using this one today. <laughs> I'm gonna use as close to 15 or 16 grams as I can get this. Start with a tablespoon. We're at 10. Nice. I think that's pretty good. We'll, we'll try to get close on the next tray too. So 15.1 or 2. So now, time to seed this. Okay, and we just want to spread the seed out as evenly as we can. They're actually resting really well in this. They're not bouncing around whenever the seeds drop, which I like. And you can see them. Which helps me from making clumps. All right, so it's one tray down. Let's do our next. Nice. I got those both correct. I like when that happens. Okay. So now let's seed our second tray. All right. So we have both of our trays now seeded with our 15 grams of mammoth red rock cabbage and it's time to move on to watering them and i just have my hose here and it's set to mist so that way i don't blast the sand all over the place and i'm gonna start from a little far away and we're just gonna try to go quick on this because i don't want to overwater it but i also don't want to not give them enough water i think that should be good So another thing I am liking is that I can actually see the water in this. So it really does help for figuring out how much water um, I'm putting on this so I don't overwater. Oh, stay. 
Okay, and now we're just gonna take this, stack it on top of our other tray, and put our top tray on top, and two bricks. <laughs> Now this should be a big factor with helping these germinate because it's really going to trap that moisture in there, having the trays to block a lot of the airflow in here. So I just got to put this on the shelf now and we're just going to check over this the next few days and see how it grows. Um, I'm just going to be very vigilant to make sure I'm not overwatering, not underwatering, and I am taking care of these microgreens and this awesome experiment. So I'll see you guys here probably tomorrow or the following day. Yeah. <laughs> Today is day two of our sand grow. So let's pull this off the shelf and take a peek at it. And hopefully we see some germination. Set these aside. Okay, so I'm gonna do this kind of careful just in case any seeds are sticking. We have a couple, it's actually not bad. Let's knock a little bit of this off. Okay, so looking at this, I am starting to see some of the seeds beginning to germinate. The little root here is starting to pop out of our seeds. We're getting some cracking. So it tells me that this is starting to work. Um, let me check the, so I can feel a tiny bit of water, but I think I do need to water it a little bit more. And I can tell because there's not as many of these opening up as I'd like to. So we're gonna water it a little bit more today, but still not super heavy. And I wanna check that bottom tray. And same for this one too. But we are seeing them, look at it. That's our first little microgreen. Nice, okay. So let's get to watering which I am going to put this up here in a different way because I almost dropped it <laughs> earlier. But this is just a nice little pump sprayer. It makes this process a lot easier. That way we're not walking all the way over to the sink or pulling the hose over here. And you don't also get hand cramps. Let's give this a good water, a little bit heavier than yesterday. I think that's pretty good for our first tray. Okay, so now all I gotta do is put this tray back on top, get those bricks placed back on top of the tray, and this goes back onto our shelf. And I'm gonna see you guys here in a few days when we have a little bit more action happening on this tray. So I'll see you then. Today is the morning of day four for our sand trial, and I'm gonna pull this off the shelf so we can take a look at what's going on. Let's remove the bricks. Oops. Okay, I'm going to be careful whenever I lift this up. And it looks like we actually have a lot of germination happening here, which is awesome to see. We're beginning to see the purple from the mammoth red rock. Um, and I am seeing a little bit of stickers up here, but it's not too bad, really. So that's good. Whenever I'm looking at this, I'm trying to see if these radicals are going down under. And it looks like they are beginning to poke through the medium in some areas. So there are a couple that are still kind of on the top. But this is a good mix right now, so I'm happy to see that some of them are getting through, so it gives me hope. And we're beginning to see a lot of those fuzzy little roots, which that's nothing to worry about. Let's kind of look at the next one. And same thing on our bottom tray. We've got a mixture of them going through the sand and some that are kind of on the top. So this is awesome. This seems to be working so far. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to be watering this with a hydrogen peroxide spray mixture. We made this yesterday because we noticed a little bit of a smell and thought it'd be good to kind of pre-treat this a little bit. So that's what I'm going to be watering with today. Which I haven't done a hand sprayer like this in a bit. So my hands probably gonna get a little bit tired. All right. Now that I got that all watered, I'm going to put my tray back on top, get the bricks placed back, back on top, place this back on the shelf, and I will see you guys maybe tomorrow for another update. Today is day five of our sand grow, so I'm going to pull this off of the shelf. It's a little bit heavy. Maybe I'm still sleepy. <laughs> and we're going to remove these bricks. And I'm actually going to turn it a little bit. There we go. Okay, so let's carefully reveal our crops so this first tray looks really really good in my opinion I, I see a lot of them driving themselves down into this we got a lot of growth there are a couple here and there that didn't quite make it in though you can see their roots are still up here but maybe they'll try to drive in more we'll have to see that later on but for the most part a lot of these did go into this medium which is really exciting and now i'm kind of curious about our bottom tray 
Oh, it looks like a ton more of these ones did too. So I think the weight actually played a big factor here because I'm seeing, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit even. No, I feel like most of these ones got in there more than this tray did. So maybe a little bit more weight would be better during germination for these, which is exciting to know. We'll have to test it out later on with some more tests. But for now, let's focus on these ones, Mandy. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this little rag here and I'm just gonna wipe off the bottom of this tray and knock it into my compost bucket because we are moving on to a different step today. So now that we have both of our trays ready, I need to give them a watering, I'm trying to decide how I want to do that. I don't believe I'm going to use any of the H2O2 spray today. I'm going to use regular water, which we will go with our little hand pump sprayer. So let's give these a pretty good watering because they are going to be going into blackout next. I want to make sure they stay good. Okay, that's good for the first one. So I'm really excited with how this second tray is looking. The first tray looks pretty good, but the second tray is definitely the one that I'm keeping my eye on because it is winning in my opinion. Let's grab our blackout trays. It's just normal tray that we flip over like this and place on top to create a dome. Now I'm going to put this back onto our shelves. And we're just gonna allow these to sit in blackout for anywhere between one to two days. I'm gonna keep my eye on it and make a decision tomorrow. And I will see you guys the moment we are ready to take these out of blackout. Today is day six of our sand grow, and I'm gonna pull these off the shelf and we'll take a look at what's going on underneath these trays. Okay, so these have been in blackout for a single day at this point, and they look perfect. I'm extremely happy with how both of these are looking. They're standing up nice and tall. I'm not gonna leave them in for blackout for any longer than this. We're gonna go with one day for that. Um, something I am noticing though between these two trays is this tray over here, which I believe was our very bottom tray, is still looking a lot better than our top tray. And the reason why I'm saying that is because if you look from above, you can actually see in the center area that this one, you don't see as many of the white root structures as you do on this tray, which tells me that a lot of these did not drive down into that medium. But nonetheless, this still looks like a very happy tray. So since we are taking these out of blackout, that means we are putting them into the light. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that before we move on to the next step. All right, so now we have these two trays underneath three of our Barina 20 watt lights. We prefer these lights because they just do a really great job. That's why we have an entire rack that is just committed to these lights in general. And if you're curious about more information about microgreen lighting, we have tons of videos on it, or we actually have a huge section in our book, Becoming a Microgreen Master, that will give you all the information you need regarding lights. But enough with that, let's move on to our very final step for today, which is bottom watering these trays. Now remember that these are a single tray. I'm not using two trays like we usually do. So we're gonna bottom water directly into this main tray here. So first, let me grab, I think I'm gonna do, let's do a cup and a half of water today. Closer to a cup and a third, but that's still where it needs to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be very gentle whenever I'm watering this because it is sand. Usually when you pour water into sand, it likes to disperse and we don't wanna do that across the entire tray because that might mess with these guys. So I'm just gonna choose a corner like this one where it's just nice and clear for me. And we're just gonna start watering into that very carefully and see how this reacts. Now this is our first time doing this here, so it's gonna be a little bit of a learning because I don't wanna tilt this too much either. I think I might actually add just a tiny bit more water to this so that way we can make sure the back of this tray gets just a little bit more, but not too much more. Just a tiny, tiny bit more. And that should be good. And I'm just gonna lightly tilt it. And now this tray's good. 
So now that we've got this tray watered, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to our second tray. So it looks like everything is staying in place rather well. Everything looks like it has enough water on the roots. From this point forward, what I really need to do is be vigilant about watering these because now they are out in the open and we have a lot of airflow in here, which means the sand could dry out quicker than I expect it to. So from this point forward, we're gonna water it twice a day. I'm gonna come out here later today, double check it, make sure it is not drying out. And I will see you guys maybe tomorrow or the following day for another update. See you then. Today is day eight of our sand grow and these have now been underneath the light for a couple days here and they've had a chance to begin greening up. So I wanted to take a look at them and talk about something that I'm noticing. So one thing I am noticing on both of these trays is there is quite a bit of yellowing within the canopy compared to some of these areas where it's typically a lot darker for this particular crop. Um, I think that that could either be A, the nutrient we are using, or B, it could be the sand itself. Since this is something that we're testing out for the first time, I'm unsure at this moment, and that's why we're gonna continue to do more tests like this and figure that out. Another thing that I wanna to discuss today is the water retention of the sand. Now, this is something that we've been having a little bit hard time judging. Some days we give a little bit too much water, and then other times we don't give it enough. So we've been kind of staying around that one cup mark at this point. Um, it's really kind of been a little bit more complicated, but either way it is working because we do have two trays that look rather even and beautiful. So all I need to do today is I'm just going to get these water. I'm going to come back out later today, double check and see where I'm at with that water. And I'll see you guys here in a few more days whenever these have stood up a little bit taller and we'll talk more about this grow. I'll see you guys then. Today is day 12 of our sand grow and these are looking abundant. Well, I'm very happy with how this turned out because on both of our trays, we have very full canopies, so full in fact that they are falling over the sides. Not only that, but they are even, and I'm just loving the color on both of these trays. Now, the last time that you saw us, I think that, or saw us, saw me, <laughs> I believe I talked about how we were having some yellowing going on, but that has changed now, and these are both looking nice and green and getting that beautiful purple that you see on this type of cabbage. Whenever I moved everything to the side too, you can see that sand in there and I'm really not seeing any signs of mold, which is awesome considering that these did kind of sit in, um, you know, like water a little bit since the sand doesn't fully absorb it. It just kind of rests with the water. So that's really awesome to see as well. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to harvest both of these trays. We're going to look at the harvest weights, look, <laughs> look at the harvest weights. We're going to take a look closer into this medium. We're going to see what it's like to harvest from this. And we will do a taste test and see what these taste like, because if they don't taste good, it's not worth it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and move into this harvesting. <laughs> so let me first move this one out of my way. Um, I'm going to put it on my shelf over here first. I got all of my harvesting equipment. I need to open up this bag real quick. And the first thing I want to do is I want to turn on my scale. To make sure we're all ready for this. And I'm going to be using a knife for this harvest day. Now, I don't know how this is gonna go with a knife. Um, my brain is going, maybe I should use scissors here, but I wanna see how this compares to some of our other grow mediums like coca Core. So we're gonna be using a knife today. So what I need to do is go to this corner and we're just gonna be careful because if you look a little close, whenever I pull this back just a little bit, it does kind of bring up that sand, which tells me it may not have a lot of grip. And I don't wanna get these grits into my microgreens because grits are not good in your teeth when you're chewing. Okay. So it is trying to come up a little bit, but that wasn't too bad. Ooh, look at those colors. That is looking beautiful. So it wasn't too bad on my first pass, but I am noticing that it is trying to fight me a little bit, but let's just continue this and see how it goes. And I'm cutting rather high up as well. So I'm definitely having to uh, focus a little bit more with harvesting from this grow medium to avoid pulling it up too much. I would say having a really sharp knife is gonna be very beneficial. If you have something that's dull, that is definitely gonna pull everything up. So make sure your knife is very sharp. So back here in the corner, I had some that were laying down onto the medium 
So I'm going to kind of avoid them for harvesting because they are covered in sand and I don't want that in there because on the rest of this bag, I managed to not get any sand on it and it really wasn't that bad. And we got a really healthy Harvey, Harvey weight, <laughs> a really healthy harvest weight of about 185. Right now our airflow in here is kind of blowing it around. So that's really good. I'm, I'm really happy with that very first tray. So I think on this next one, I kind of want to try something different where I harvest them with scissors. So I'm gonna have CJ grab me a pair of scissors real quick and let's give that a go and see how that turns out. All right, now let's try this with scissors and see if there's any difference in the process. So again, this tray is doing kind of the same thing where it's trying to pull it up, but the colors are beautiful, just like on our first tray. I'm loving those deep purples. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's easier to harvest this with um, a knife rather than scissors because I'm noticing whenever I chomp down on the little stems, it pulls them all together first, which causes the medium to get tugged compared to the knife where it just glided through. So I'm gonna switch back to a, a knife so that way this process goes a lot quicker because otherwise I might be here for a lot longer. <laughs> oh yeah, big difference. Okay, see this right here? That's what you gotta be careful of. See how when I grabbed uh, this handful of the ones I cut, it pulled up a few other because they tend to get uh, tangled on each other. And I don't want those getting into my bag because they do have sand on them. But it was really easy to get them out. <laughs> I'd say with the um, coarser sand, it's a lot easier to identify uh, which little stems have sand on them because I'm able to see exactly where it is and I can feel it a lot quicker. I don't know how it would be with a finer sand that might be a little bit more difficult. So it is nice with the thicker sand for that. Okay. All right. And on this tray, we got a harvest weight of 180. It was at 186. <laughs> Once again, the air is moving around a lot. So we got pretty consistent trays on both of them, 185 grams for one and 186 for the other. So that's awesome. The consistency here is exactly what I like to see. You want consistent trays because if it's all over the place, that's just no fun. Trying to guess how much harvest weight you're gonna have per tray, especially if you have customers to sell to. So now that we have harvested these, let's go ahead and give them a little bit of a taste test and see if they even taste good. So first off, it smells really good. It has a nice brassica scent, which is great. It tells me it should taste good, I hope. <laughs> so the flavor, it was really good. It had a nice light crunch to it when I first bit into it, followed by a little bit more of a softer uh, microgreen, which that may be just the light or the nutrient. So it might not necessarily be the grow medium for that one. So that is awesome to know that these both taste good and they gave us consistent growth. So now I want to talk about the thing that I was really excited about with this is can this be reused? So that means that we need to remove all of these stems here, which I'm going to show you guys the process that I have no idea if it's going to work. We're just going to try it out <laughs> and see if it, you know, saves a lot of the sand, if it takes away a lot of it. I don't know yet, but let's go through this process. So what I'm thinking is first, I need to get rid of everything on here. And to do that, I want to use water. So we're gonna go over to our sink area. I'm gonna take this, this little bowl right here. And we're going to first add water to this bowl. And what am I doing? We'll talk about it over there. I'll see you over there. <laughs> okay, so we are over at our sink station. And this is where we're gonna start playing around and figuring out how can we remove all of this root structure and leftover stems from this grow medium and then sanitize it and reuse it. So first I got my bowl over here, my handy dandy bowl, and I'm thinking let's add some water to it. 
And I'm gonna fill it up pretty decently far because what I'm hoping is, I'm gonna pour the sand into it and I'm hoping that it will separate the sand, at least most of it, from the root structure. Um, I again, don't know if it's gonna work, but let's find out if it does. So our buck or bucket, our bowl is filled up with some water and now we're just gonna start trying some stuff. So a lot of this is pretty stuck in there because we did have really healthy roots. Wow, look how healthy those are. That is a beautiful root structure. Okay, it's a little too wet for me to just tilt the tray and pour it in. So first I'm just gonna start by just grabbing some of this and placing it into here. And immediately a good chunk of that actually did start coming off. And I'm just kind of grabbing it and shaking it a little bit. And we're just gonna take that and move it out. I'm gonna put it in this for now. So I don't wanna put it back in my tray yet. So that is working. I'm just gonna do that again. A lot of that sand is separating from the root structure. Not too hard to handle either. Yeah, look at that. A whole lot of that sand came out. Get a few more shakes. Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's working pretty good. Okay, so right now I have a lot of this floaters on here and I'm just gonna use a little, um, this is used for like fish tanks and stuff. I'm just gonna scoop out some of that to get out of my way and then we'll move on to another chunk. Okay, and let's go back in, do the same thing. And again, look how much sand. It's kind of fun. I'm not gonna lie, whatever you put it in the water, it's really cool watching it separate. That or maybe I'm kind of a nerd. I get really excited about stuff like that. It's really entertaining. Yeah, look. Yeah, so this is working. So I found it really easy to just kind of grab them all by the stems, dip and shake. Now I got all of the big chunks out of my way. I'm just wanna kind of scoop this out a little bit more again. And now I want to make sure I get the rest of this. I'm gonna move it to one side since it's still pretty moist. So it is a little bit of a hands-on and messy process, but it's fun. <laughs> I enjoy this. And it doesn't look like we've really wasted too much sand at all, which is great. So we're not losing any of that grow medium really. Okay. We got everything out of our tray now, and I'm just gonna kind of mix this around a little bit with my hand and see if I can fill any more of the chunks at the bottom and also kind of help them get out of the sand since I did just pour it all into there together. So for the first step of this process, it appears that we basically got everything out without taking out a whole lot, and everything is looking really healthy and happy too, which is really cool to see as well. These roots are beautiful. 
And again, only a tiny bit of sand mixed in here. Okay, so I'm gonna take this to my compost bucket real quick. Just kind of get this area tidied up a little bit. So I'll be right back. All right, so now what I'm thinking is I want to get the water removed from the sand. And I'm just gonna be really careful right now because I don't have a bowl underneath this. Let's start like this. And this is very heavy. Just gotta very gently tilt this to remove water. I don't wanna pour the sand out. Really nice you can see how the seeds actually separated too okay now I'm getting into the risky business area so I'm gonna pour out as much of that as I can I'm just gonna go ahead too and oh nice so we got a lot of that out there's only a tiny bit of stuff left in there and now what I want to do is move all of this can you see how this is a messy a <laughs> little bit of a messy process I now want to take this sand and I'm going to put it on an oven safe pan. I figured I want a pan that's decently big so I can try to get this as flat as I can. Um, this is the biggest I had at the moment. So we're just going to do a little bit at a time for today just to see if the general concept of this works. Never mind. So you just say, let's do the whole thing. So let's go all the way today. So what we're going to do is we're just going to place this sand on to this tray. And I'm doing that with my hands because I don't want to get the rest of that water that's in there. You want to try to remove that as much as possible now depending on how vigilant you want to be you can sit here and scrape out as much as i as you want i would think a spatula would do really well for that um but i'm gonna go i'm only gonna be going as far as this today so let's kind of just spread this out So now that I have this all spread out on this oven safe pan, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this into our house, to our oven, which I'm going to turn on to 180 degrees. And we're going to put this in the oven for at least 30 minutes, but we're probably going to take it all the way up to an hour since this is a thick layer and there is a lot of sand here. We want to make sure that this gets really dried out, that it sterilizes it, and also hopefully it will bake away some of this little debris that we do see in there. But Let's go ahead and move on to that because I'm excited about this process. All right guys, so it has been another hour and we actually cranked the temperature up to 240 and it is time for me to pull this out of the oven. So looking at this grow medium right now, it isn't fully dry, but it has had enough time to start to dry a little bit and it has been fully sterilized at this point, which that's what I wanna see because I really want this to be clean for reuse on my next grow, which we were able to do. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna let this continue to air dry and that is gonna be it for this video because we've proven that we can use sand to grow microgreens and it worked really well. And not only that, we can take this grow medium, clean it out, which also wasn't that hard, and reuse it or re-sanitize it for reuse. So that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. If you have any questions, comments, maybe some suggestions about this row, please let us know in the comment section down below. We have an Instagram and an Instagram and a Facebook that is at On The Grow Farms. And we have a website that is www.onthegrow.net where you can actually find our books now. So be sure to check that out. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and keep on believing.